We'll call the regular meeting of the Epps County Commission to order. We'll begin with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we will have the reading of the minutes of November 21st. Good morning. Good morning, Jackie. The County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia, held their regular meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Thursday, November 21, 2013, at 9 a.m. Donnie Tanney called the meeting to order. There were present Donnie Tanney, Commissioner, J.C. Rafferty, Commissioner, Troy Brady, Commissioner, Megan Pomeroy, County Administrator, Jennifer Dinklow, Assistant County Administrator, and Jacqueline Dinklocker, Secretary. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. After reading of the minutes on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Troy Brady, the Commission approved the regular meeting minutes of November 14, 2013 as submitted. Steve Holmes, Upshur County resident and business owner slash operator, appeared before the commission and expressed concerns regarding floodplain issues. Terry Jo Bennett, flood, floodplain manager, advised that she issued a cease and desist order to stop fill operations at a Brushy Fork location due to FEMA requirements to obtain a conditional letter of MAP amendment. However, Mr. Holmes has not complied with the order and has not applied for the proper permits. Currently, the subject property is located within the special flood hazard area per FEMA flood maps. Mr. Holmes advised that since permits were issued prior to 2010 changes to flood areas, he should be exempt from having to obtain new and or additional permits. Donnie Tenney advised Mr. Holmes to submit any documentation he has to the Commission, and the item will be placed on a future agenda. After discussion on motion by Troy Brady, second by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved and authorized the President to sign the West Virginia <coughs> EMPG program subgrant application in the amount of $36,707 for Office of Emergency Management Operations for the 2013 calendar year. <coughs> After discussion on motion by Troy Brady, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the employment of the E911 Communication Center Dispatchers effective November 20, 25, 2013, at the rate of $10 per hour as follows. Cassandra W. McManus, full-time. Sarah J. Loudon, full-time. Eric J. Sterling, full-time. Kristen A. Hall, part-time. Derek M. Lee, part-time. And Joshua E. Cowart, part-time. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Troy Brady, the Commission approved the reappointment of Don Killingsworth to the Adrian Public Service District Board of Directors. Mr. Killingsworth, Killing, Killingsworth's term will expire on October 31, 2019. After discussion on motion by Troy Brady, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved, approved Samara Kendrick as volunteer for the Lewis Upshur Animal Control Facility. All required paperwork has been submitted. Donnie Tanney reviewed the following for your information items. Number one, correspondence from the Department of Military Affairs and Public Safety concerning site visit relating to grant number 10, SHS 59. Number two, correspondence concerning the Governor's Community Participation Grant Project number 12, LEDA 0223 in the amount of $2,000 for the benefit of the literacy volunteers. Number three, agendas and or notices of meetings as listed. Four, meeting minutes and or financial reports as listed. Five, meetings as listed, six appointments needed or upcoming as listed. The commission recessed at 10.05 a.m. to travel to Harrison County Voter Registration Office 
for the 850 ballot scanner demonstration by Casto and Harris Incorporated. The commission reconvened at 2.10 p.m. The commission approved all invoices for payment. The commission approved all vacation orders. The commission approved all the following settlements <coughs> as listed. No further business on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Troy Brady. The commission meeting adjourned at 2.30 p.m. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes as read? If not, I'll ask for a motion to be approved as such. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, our first scheduled appointment is at 930 with Steve Foster from the Development Authority, but we have several items to go over with possible action and need for approval. The first being approval of memorandum of understanding agreement, City of Buckhannon Fire Department and Upshur County Commission, exchange of confidential mapping information. Megan, we finally got it. Didn't we we? Finally did. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the agreement, the memorandum of understanding that outlines the um, terms for us providing that information to the fire department. Um, we do still need their certificate of insurance, um, but that was in the agreement that they signed. So now we just have to sign that, return it to them, and then wait to get their certificate of insurance, and then we can provide them with the mapping data that they want. And that's pretty much in pike in the pike. It's in it's. As soon as we get their yeah, certificate of insurance, right. yes. Okay. And that's just, this is just the city of Buckingham Fire Department right okay. now. Well, you don't see any problem getting that in an expedient type manner? That is up to them. I'm sure. I'm so basically, we'll sign it and we'll hold the agreement until we get the certificate of insurance and then we'll give them approval. We'll give them a copy of the agreement that's been approved by the commission. Is that what we'll do? Well, we'll sign this and return this to them, but the agreement states that they will provide us with a certificate of insurance. Okay. That's a city so of account. So we just need to wait and get that before we actually give them the, the mapping data. And that's oh, okay. Give them the agreement, but not the mapping data. Right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, was there a concern over the amount of coverage on the computer fraud? Was that an issue with our insurance company? Um, no, I talked to them about that. They said it's not because they have other insurance, the general liability and that would cover computer fraud above the 25000 They were not concerned. Who was it? Our insurance. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we uh, we would need a uh, motion to approve motion. the memorandum of understanding and authorize the president to sign the document. I so move. I will second Thank that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same so. Motion carries. Approval for hire, Upshur County Commission, administrative assistance at $8 an hour, 35 hours per week, effective Monday, December the 9th, 2013. Yes, um, we conducted interviews <coughs> and we would like to recommend um, Sherry McDaniels for hire. She um, was very impressive. She has a lot of experience and um, I think she would fit in well here. Okay. And that's not our local Sherry McDaniels. That's I've had different people ask me, is that Sherry Manhattan? Is it the local? But it's not. It's She actually moved here from, she's from this area originally, but she moved back from Florida? Georgia. Georgia. Okay, so um, hopefully she'll like working here and it'd be good to have a secretary, or a, um, excuse me, a administrative assistant. So do we have a motion to approve the hire? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Discussion on public-private partnership resolution for quarter H request for support from Steve Foster, Upshur County Development Authority. And he has a uh, resolution in here which we have uh, taken action on and approved the support and provide support for quarter H. This is, I guess, just an additional uh, resolution uh, to the governor um, to do everything, asking them to do everything in their power to finance the completion of sections of quarter H between Kearns and Davis through public-private partnerships and modern engineering and construction practices. Is that something new? public-private partnerships and it's modern set, engineering construction practices. It's set forth in something that he'll be discussing this afternoon or later this morning from the land use master plan. It involves the uh, 
private partnership relative to some economic development of uh, the old strip mines that have not been uh, reclaimed or totally reclaimed, and they can use those for development, economic development, set forth in the, in the plan here. Oh, will, okay. Which he'll explain at 9.30. So he'll explain that. But uh, so at this point in time, I think we're all in agreement that uh, it would be good for everyone if the uh, quarter H is completed, clear through, and Virginia is taking steps to complete. Is Will this complete? Yeah, their completion by 2026. So, uh, do we have a motion then that we support this resolution? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Appointment to Upshur County Farmland Protection Board of Joe Reed, term June 30th, 13th through June 30th, 15th. Um, and Steve Foster, who's actually on that board, also spoke to Joe Reed, and he let me know that Joe Reed was interested and willing to serve on that board, and they have, he has the board's I think support as well. I think he'll do a good job. So I would ask for a motion to approve that appointment. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Appointments to Buchanan Upshur Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Michael Livesey. The second replacement term in... June 30th, 14, Christine Bennett for term ending June 30th, 15. And these are um, positions that have been vacant for quite a while, and we do have some interest from these two individuals in being on the park board. Um, and the park board met this Monday and discussed it, and the park board supports their, their appointments. Uh, appointment. Okay, do we have a motion to appoint these two individuals to the park board? Some. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion. And we have appointment to the Upshur County Building Commission Board, A.G. Trussler. New term runs from November 10, 13 through November 10, 18. That's almost like a commission term, isn't it? <laughs> so do we have a motion to appoint A.G. to our building commission? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Next item is discussion and approval of radio communication improvements for Upshur County Communications Department slash Upshur Fire Radio System. These are um, some IRP radios that they need. Um, I, I, Steve indicated that they have some repair work that needs to be done. Um, they always have a spare con console. Um, on hand, but they've had to use that spare console, so now they don't have a backup, so they would re like to replace that backup and some other um, kind of needed repairs and updates. Well, it's also the emergencies that we uh, occurred last year with regards to the Direco and the snowstorm, that this allows you to use the state radio backbone, what they call an operable backbone, to communicate great distances with clarity. Uh, so I think that's a, a worthy, worthy expense. And how many, how many of those uh, interoperable radios would be involved in this purchase? Each department will have several of them. In fact, they've already been issued. I believe we received a grant a while back that had uh, a number of them. And the uh, OEM, Office of Emergency Management, maintained them and have been distributing them on a regular basis to the departments. But I mean, in this this expenditure here, are there any in that, or is that? What's that? Uh, and this expenditure here that we're asked to. Let's see. Number. I, I believe yeah, they got uh, two. Turn look down here. Is that the 10 to 40 watt? Is that what that is? I, I That's a mobile that. unit. That would be a mobile. But that yeah. be the interoperable 1600 well, apiece? Well, right. they would. Yes, they would. Uh, that would be the one as the shares those frequencies. And these would be ones that we'd be using at the comm center. Right. Plus, well, they have a, a, a uh, radio that would be dedicated for that. Right. Uh, the term they use for it. They, they, uh, basically, it sits there. It's dedicated to the uh, events to monitor. Okay. They also provide those, like, to other people during the Strawberry Festival or other types of 
activities uh, in case emergency uh, issues arise. But is that that's? I don't think that's the interoperable. The, no, they they would give some of those out, I believe, during of the, the interoperable. Right, they're, oh, okay. they're, they're, a, they're a hand unit. Those right. Would be hand so that each interested party would have one, and then right. they'd have communication. They'd return them at the end of the strawberry right. festival. Okay, any questions on this? This has come out of the 911 fund that, that we have great surplus in, right? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so um, all in favor of the, making this expenditure? I mean, I might ask for a motion first, probably. I'll move. I'll move. You'll move? Do we second. have a second, buddy? Second. And the total is. Is the eight? Oh, okay. five thousand. Um, the Motorola total is five thousand two hundred fifty-five, and then the other quote is for eighteen thousand six hundred fifty. Okay. So, the motion was just to expand the eighteen thousand six hundred fifty. Is that correct? Is that what they're requesting? There's two there. There's the. There's a five thousand dollar about Motorola quote, and then there's also a an eighteen thousand about Lloyd's quote. Lloyd's quote. Okay, so are we approving all that? I see three quotes actually. I see a five thousand. I see a three thirty three hundred from Lloyd's. And That's just the first page of that quote. That's included on the eighteen thousand dollar total. Oh, okay. Okay. Over. So the thirty three, and then the it's carried over. Okay. That's carried over on the second. So. Page. It, the motion then is to approve the eighteen thousand. Is that correct? That'd be correct. Is that what we're? Well, Plus we need the, to approve all of it. Yeah. Uh, and the total is eighteen thousand. Is that correct? No. no. Total no, would be five plus eighteen, be twenty-three. Do we have the money to do that? I know that may be not a good question to ask, but <laughs> we're talking twenty it's, some thousand dollars. Yeah, that it's coming out of the nine one one funds. And we do have money in that, or is it going to have to come out of general revenue and? And then be reimbursed from the 911 fund. Um, I believe it comes out of the 911 funds. Okay, because I thought I we can would, double check on that. If I, I just thought, I mean, we just, I mean, I don't have a problem if this is what we need. But if if we're having to pay it out of general revenue and then wait to be reimbursed, then I think we just need to to be aware of that. That's my only concern. Or do you think there's enough? Or do we need to check with Carol? I would have to check. Well, we, if you guys don't mind, defer it. Defer it. Would you mind holding your motion in a second? I'll be fine. I'll do that. Okay. Because <laughs> Steve, Steve's probably going to want some money here too. We're going to have to see if we got any money for him. Okay. So we will we will check on that and then we'll get back to that. We've got about seven minutes, Steve. So just relax, Doctor Reed. If you guys want a cup of coffee, you're more than welcome. We're a very hospitable group here. Is that coffee poured out of the pot now, or is it still got it's, food it out? No, it's good. Okay. These, these young ladies know how to make good coffee, I'm telling you. Okay, so um, we have our Middletown Tractor FFA scholarship program. And this is something I went to a West Montai um, meeting recently, and this is something that they introduced there. It's through Middletown Tractor Sales um, up in Fairmont is where we met. And I just thought that maybe um, the public might want to know this is just another scholarship opportunity through Middletown Tractor where you can get, I think it's about $2,000. And the attachment is a little weird because it was a brochure, but <laughs> um, you can get an award of $2,000. There's a little section there that explains who's eligible. Um, you have to be less than 23 at the time of application, plan to attend a post-secondary school. Um, and then there's only certain counties in West Virginia and Pennsylvania that are eligible to apply for this, and Upshur County is one of those. So, I just thought I would make make everybody aware of that that there are some scholarship opportunities out there for students. Well, I'd say if you haven't if you haven't already done so, we might. I mean, the, our local FFA advisor might be aware of this, but it'd be good to pass this information along just in case. Uh, closes February the first, so there's still uh, still time. West Montana may have already notified all those, but just in case it'd be good yeah. to follow up. That's good information there. Did you learn anything else at that West Montana meeting? It was very interesting. They had some very um, cool rain gauges that they are looking for volunteers, I believe, to um, have 
and then you go out and check it, and then they, they have a very interactive map where it posts how much rain there is in each different area where oh, they have really? these up. And it was a very good meeting. Weather forecast. Weather. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a, I don't know how many there are in Upshur County, but Dr. Gould out where uh, MPL Corporation, he was a, a weather, I don't know what the term was, weather recorder for years. And he would, he would had his little station, he went out and he, he checked the temperature, the rainfall or the snowfall, and then he called the National Weather Service. And then I believe up at Rock Cave, John Chittister did that for years too. So it's kind of interesting, but. Uh, I think they have, I don't know if they were the same individuals, but also the local television channels have watchers or whatever, they spotters. Do you, Jeff? Well. You have spotters and watchers? Yeah. Well, I just bought, I just bought, not to get off the subject, but it is kind of the subject. I bought a little weather station. It tells the wind speed, the wind direction. It tells the high and the low. It records it for the month. It records the rainfall on a daily basis, and then it, it dumps it. At the, at the end of that 24-hour time period, and then so every every time it rains, whatever the 20, and then at the bottom, it, it's kind of like watching the, you know, uh, Weather Channel or mm -hmm. Fox News has that little ticker across the bottom, and it'll say your coldest day for the last 30 days was so cold, your hottest day, your amount of rainfall. So it's kind of neat. I don't even have to leave the house to know what the weather is. It's pretty exciting. I was in a store just recently, a Trading Post. And they have it to call it weather rope. Mm -hmm. If the rope is dry, it means there's no rain. If the rope's wet, it means there's rain. And if, it's if the rope's blowing, frozen, there's snow. And if it's blowing, so they're just as just as just as probably predictable as your yeah, device. Probably. It's not as accurate, but it's as predictable. Yeah. You don't have one of them. I do not have one of those. No. <laughs> some of us can afford the luxury. Some of us can't. Do you use it after you after you use your soap on the rope? Is that what you use in for weather <laughs> prognostic? Okay. Anyway. Um, we better hurry because Steve's only got three minutes. Correspondence from Joe DeLong. Update on changes with regional jail authority. That's just an update letter on, on what's going on there, um, what has gone on in the last two years, and, and some of the programs that they're taking on. Unfortunately, rates aren't going to change. Well, they reduced last year. So. They reduced last year, and they're looking. Yeah. I, it's going to depend on what they do with all these. Um, uh, DOJ, is it DOJ, DO? DOC. DOC, Department of Corrections. Department of Corrections. Yeah. They're talking about t pulling a bunch of those out of the regional jail because of overcrowding, and then what that's going to do is drop the numbers, which makes the cost per inmate higher. So they're trying to get a balance there so it doesn't have an adverse effect on the regional jail bail. Correspondence from Jeff Amberg. That's just a letter notification we received that they um, do annual um, compliance testing um, just to make sure that we are up to standards and uh, complying with standards established by the PDC and he said that we passed and um, that our office is to be congratulated down in the office. Right and that's the I think I think it was July that that went into effect that if the county's uh, appraisals weren't up to a certain percentage then that affected the school uh, funding. So I think there were some counties that failed that test. So, okay, next is correspondence from Division of Justice Community Services, mandatory civil rights training for grant sub-grantees. That's just notification that as um, recipients of that grant that the project director has to go through certain training, um, mandatory civil rights training. So just wanted to include that in the agenda. It's online training. Yes, yeah. yeah. I believe they said it's about three to five hours. I believe worth of training, but there's I think it's split up into like six different sections, and there's a little test at the end. I think. So who will have to go through that? This is for the community correction. So I'm in contact with Rodney Rollinson to make sure that we have some. They comply with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need any civil rights problems. That's for sure. <laughs> um, correspondence from West Virginia Courthouse Facilities Improvement Authority application funding request denied. Yes, that was for our chimneys. Um, we've been hearing that grant money is probably going to start going down. So right. I think that's a, probably a smaller project as compared to some of the other applications that they received. So. Well, and it's priority. I mean, there's a lot of re-roofing jobs and right. things like that. Or, and we they've been very kind to us, the yes. courthouse um, facilities. 
so we'll just keep working. Um, correspondence from Volunteer West Virginia, notice of grant closeout, um, 11 CC M08, amount um, ordered 2000, total dispersed 1993.06. I believe they used that money to purchase a computer for CERT, uh, and they've just they purchased everything that they need to for that. So okay. just notification that that's complete. And they're going to send six dollars and ninety four cents back. <laughs> so you don't see that very often, do you? I saw on the news the other day before the government shut down that one of the departments stocked up all their liquor. I forget how many hundred thousand they bought in in um, liquor to stock up their um, for the government shutdown. Did that you was see the that? State Department was for Entertainment state? overseas yeah. at the embassies. There you go. Well then. Okay, somebody shot at me, had to get. Okay, and our NACO prescription drug discount card program monthly participation update. That's just a monthly report that we get. Um, we're members of NACO, and so they send us this report that tells us how many people are using that drug discount card. We're staying pretty steady at about 30 to 50. We're at 35 last month, or I'm sorry, October. Okay. Well, we'd encourage people, if you don't have insurance, to get a um, copy of our NACO uh, discount drug program and take that when you get your prescription and you'll get a discount uh, from your major pharmacy. Okay. Well, it's 930, and we have with us today Steve Foster, Upshur County Development Authority, presentation of Upshur County Land Use Master Plan. 2013. So step right up there, Steve. And is that your prop over there? Or is that? Uh, it's not my prop. No. It's not your prop. It's Dr. Reed's. Dr. Reed's prop. Right. Ooh. Okay. You should have had before you, uh, and have had hopefully a couple of days, had a chance to look at what's called a lump plan, which is a local use. A land use management plan for Upshur County. Basically, what this is, if you remember a few years ago, the Office of Energy for the state of West Virginia worked out a deal with a Ray Hole Transportation Institute where they come in and look at all coal mining activities, counties throughout the state, and they encourage you to develop a land use master plan where you can work with existing people that have strip mine operations to possibly uh, facilitate having that land left when they are done with it in a type of format where you might be able to use it for something in the county, be it uh, industrial development, recreation property, et cetera. Um, this is put together by the uh, Office of Coalfield Communities, which again is Department of Energy for the state of West Virginia. And it's a rather uh, inclusive report in terms of looking at the demographics of Upshur County, mm -hmm. some trends there. It actually is a pretty favorable report if you take a look at the executive summary, which is the first couple of pages. But they identify four active strip mining permit locations in the county. And they bring this to your attention. There's nothing binding about this document, but they said that it might be able to be used to, again, work with the company that's operating that particular permit to leave the land in such a way that you might be able to use it in the future. For example, if they've built in roads into the site, you might want to, as opposed to having them return it to approximate original contour, leave those roads there. If there's water or sewer or power brought into the site, you can work with them to possibly leave that there basically allows them to potentially have a little less expense when they close out the operation and their permit. And it also leaves us with the opportunity to have something there that we could use. Uh, of the four sites, which they go over in detail, how close the Harlow Road, uh, what's there in terms of water, sewer, how far do you have to go to get it, et cetera. There is at least one of those that looks very potentially attractive for maybe some recreation property that could be used in the future. That's only about a couple of miles here north on uh, 20 or 119 that we could access. Uh, again, what I'd like to do is approach that company and see what their plans are in terms of finishing up their permit and what, how they're going to leave that land, but we might want to talk to them about possibly leaving that facility there. All this is is something that I offer for you to accept. My understanding is that if you do accept it, 
then you would put in the paper notification that there's 30 day uh, public comment period if anybody wants to come in and look at it. But basically there's nothing binding about this document at all. So okay. I'll offer it up for your uh, consideration. Any question? On uh, page 72, uh, when I was reviewing it, I noticed that three of the four permits, if I understand this correctly, if I'm interpreting it correctly, have expired already. I asked the same question, and they said they probably don't keep that up to date, but that these are either act, these are still active permits. They are still active. They just active, haven't okay. been updated. Okay. So I didn't know if some of these were, according to this information, expired in 1997. In fact, there's only one of them I think that's, that's still Correct. current, which Currently. is up your properties down at uh, right down the southern part of the state or southern so part of the county. They, excuse me. Okay. So uh, if you can accept this then it'll be advertised for public comment for a period of 30 days. And then it's just an update of a plan that we've already had. We had this adopted, I think, here. Probably, Donnie, you remember that about five or six years ago? Oh, wow. E.L. Robinson did the work, and they came in. And so this is just an update of that plan to bring it into to current uh, times, if you will. So where does this fit into the scheme of, <clears throat> of your state and federal agencies that would have to approve leaving the strip mines the way they are and not having them reclaimed. Is that is that another big hurdle that needs to be crossed? Having this as a footprint makes it a lot easier to have that done, okay? So if you wanted to work with a strip mining operation to, again, as opposed to put it back to AOC, approximate original contour, to leave the roads and set certain infrastructure in place, then this is an opportunity That's to have that done a lot easier. Right, okay. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of, and there has been over the state, there have been uh, strip jobs that have been turned into different forms of economic development. Uh, there's not many level pieces of property in West Virginia, and if you can, you know, if it's feasible to use a, a strip job instead of um, expending all that energy. I think they ran in years ago, and I'm not old enough to remember that, J.C. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Dr. Reed, maybe you remember up at the up at the airport. I believe you know that was stripped up there where the airport is, and I believe that they actually made them reclaim that, and then go back when they built the airport and then move a bunch of it again, which is crazy to to spend all that energy on something that's a waste. And I think this is a, this is something that <coughs> could be used to to help promote economic development by using things and not uh, a, just a common sense approach. <laughs> yeah, I know that's not in the government's, uh, you know, little toolkit mostly, but um, I think it's a good idea. Have you looked at this, Megan? you have any comments? I haven't had a chance to look through all of it. But. Is this uh, approved by the DEPA? Again, there's nothing binding in here, so it doesn't take approval for them, but it would only come into that effect if, in fact, you wanted to work with a coal company to change that, then they'd have to approve it, obviously. Yes, they're under bond. Right. <coughs> That's correct. To, um, you know, to bring it back, they're, they're, under bond. To them. <coughs> they're under bond to bring it back to approximate original contour. What this is is saying, hey, in terms of planning, if we could get 50 acres of flat land, rather than return it to approximate original contour, we'd be happy to work with the county commission and the DEP and whoever to leave that property level as opposed to returning to that. So they use the bond money to do that as opposed to returning it the way it was. I think one of the other implications might be part of the correctly is that in return for not having to return to contour, they would also make some additional investments for productive use of the land. Am I correct in that or not? Yes, but again, it's not binding. It has to be worked out and agreed to between the two parties. I think this has been successfully used, at least it's been touted as successful in the southern part of the state, where they've been able to put shopping malls and things of that nature on some of this flat. Shopping land. malls, hospitals, industrial yeah. parks. Uh, it's yeah. pretty impressive what they've been able to do down there. To bring it home locally, uh, Meadowbrook Mall mm -hmm. is on a reclaimed strip mall site, okay? Our industrial park is on a reclaimed strip mining shelf. So, yes, you can work to have this done, and as you say very well, it's common sense. Yeah. Uh, 
why return it to approximate mountainous contour if you've got 50 acres you could use as flat land? Right. Well, and, and as it states here, Senate Bill 603 mandates the development of a lump by counties with surface mining operations. So that was actually the legislature apparently is concerned about these level uh, spots being reclaimed and, and the potential of them to be used for economic development. So this was brought about by an active legislature. And they found a way to finance that work done through the Rail Transportation Institute. Right. And that's what this is a result right. of that work, which they paid for, which is nice. I think this report, as you've indicated earlier, is a very detailed uh, uh, study of the demographics of our county. Uh, more so than just the economic development aspect of it. it, it gives one a chance to say, you know, some of the real uh, particular aspects of Upshur County and compares it with other counties as well on the state maps. And it compares us, like I said, very favorably with some right. other coal mining counties. Uh, one of the things they point out and that the concern in this report is that the dropout rate for in education for mm -hmm. primary and secondary uh, schools was very high at the time they looked at this report. And, uh, as you and I heard last night with uh, Dr. Wager reporting, right. that's down to 1.7 percent, which is incredibly very much uh, from where it was from seven, seven years percent. ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So, uh, do we have a motion then that we approve the Upshur County Land Use Master Plan 2013? So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Then Megan, you'll need to advertise this for public comment. I'm told. Okay. Super. I have one other thing, too, while I'm here, if you don't mind, sure. I'll go ahead and address that. Uh, as you folks are aware, uh, just recently we opened another five-mile section of Corridor H over uh, from Mount Storm over to Shear, so you no longer have to slide down that mountain or climb up. It's, it's literally about a 15-minute gain in commute time over to the eastern side of the state. Uh, another thing that's come to light is last year the West Virginia State Legislature passed a bill which allows for the first time in West Virginia what they call 3P uh, organization for building roads. That's public-private partnerships. And in the past, uh, we've been able to take advantage of contracting out designing and building a road to contractors. That's the 10 miles that's now currently under construction between Mount Storm and Davis, West Virginia. But now they allow the design, building, and financing by large contractors of road. For example, we've worked with the Department of Highways. They would like to go ahead and use this 3P approach to building the next 10 miles of Corridor H from Karen's to Parsons, which is just about 10 miles. That's about a $400 million job. What they'd like to do is go out to bid for someone to design it, to build it, and to finance it. And if contractors are willing to do that, it's being used in other states around West Virginia and here in the eastern part of the U.S. And basically it would allow us to be driving on that road in four years. We'll pay for it over 10. So if you will, it's akin to like buying a house. Most people don't have the luxury of saving up enough money to go in and pay for a house the first time they buy it. They have a mortgage. And that's basically what this is. It's a concept which allows you to build the road, use the road, why you continue to pay on it. Now you have to ask yourself, where's that stream of money going to come in to pay for the road? And we've got that via the ARC and the federal government giving us $40 million a year in West Virginia to build these roads. ARC for the viewing audience is Appalachian Regional, Regional Corridor, Corridor Highway System, yeah. right. And basically sure. that would allow us to build the road um, and then be able to use it while we continue to pay for it for six years beyond when the road's completed. And uh, this is pretty novel. Uh, it's a tool that we've never had to work with in West Virginia, and what we're asking for is all county commissioners, city councils, uh, different development authorities, particularly the seven counties which are impacted by Corridor H, to adopt a resolution which says let's go forward and use this tool and make it happen. Again, the Department of Highways is on board. Uh, we need to get the legislature and the governor on board to support this concept. 
Uh, the other interesting things which has happened recently is the state of Virginia, which supposedly wasn't ever going to build their section of Corridor H, have come out and announced their plans to the ARC as to the fact that they will complete their section of Corridor H by no later than 2026. So that 14 miles will be built. It's been uh, basically confirmed through their uh, highway departments that it's going to be done. And so we continue to make progress on getting corridor H completed. Again, I can't think of a single economic incentive that would be higher for this region than to get this road done. And you're already seeing an uptick on traffic, for example, in Davis. Uh, talking with my friends over there and their tourism department, they've already seen the uptick. And they're excited to death because next year that's going to be done right to their doorstep. So it's going to bring all those people over from metropolitan areas east of West Virginia, D.C., Baltimore, et cetera, and let them have literally two-hour access to being in the Canaan Valley. So they're definitely seeing an uptick. So I'd ask for your uh, consideration of passing this resolution. How many, what's the total miles yet to be built in West Virginia for age? About 40. 40 miles? 10 miles from Karen's to Parsons, about 15 miles up from Parsons to Davis, and at the other end over from Wardensville up to the Virginia lines, about six miles. Basically, uh, if we can get the Karen's to Parsons done, it'll be 87% complete. 130 miles in West Virginia. Okay, well, once again, it looks like just a common sense approach to uh, uh, getting something done. So we, <clears throat> we already, we've already approved that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's been approved. Too. Good deal. So, Thank you. All right, so you, you got it batting 100% this morning. <laughs> I didn't ask for money. Did I didn't say he didn't <laughs> ask for money. Got, so. That's why you're batting 100%. <laughs> and if you had to ask you, man, I've been batting 100%. <laughs> he'll, 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 be have, he'll be back. He'll be back. I'm going to pull your average down a little bit. Okay, so Dr. Reed, did you have something for us? We just approved you to the, uh, what was it, Farmland Preservation Board? Right. So, if you'd like to give your congratulatory speech, yeah. and acceptance <laughs> speech. Oh, he's got something here. I just wanted to show you something here that I thought you might be interested in. This is west and this is east. Airport. Uh-oh. I'll hand it up here. Let's take a fly. Oh, that's beautiful there, the mist on mountains. And I don't know whether you know it or not, everybody, but uh, from up there you can see about 40 of the windmills over at Alfred's. Oh, really? Especially That was one thing, this report that uh, sure. Steve uh, provided us, I was reviewing. It appears to me that there is no place in Upshur County where it would be suitable for uh, wind turbines to be constructed. At the best, we're fair in terms of our uh, wind velocity, except in County Commission on every other Thursday. Every Thursday. <laughs> Thanks, every other Thursday. <laughs> A little subliminal message there. <laughs> But you know, good. actually, but we are good for geothermal. Right, very good for geothermal. Geothermal. Well, I saw uh, I saw a report somewhere, and I don't know how valid it was. I don't remember where it came from, but it said within the next so many years that the United States that the solar energy would surpass natural gas. Unlikely. I don't think technology-wise, that I just and can't dollar see that. Kilowatt hour. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I just pass that along. Okay, we have our building permits for November. That was a good jump. Two million. Not bad. So there's growth in Upshur County. And that, we have other reports from Community Corrections and Elkins Road and uh, Family Resource Network. Uh, other than that, we've lost Megan and Jennifer. We're all alone. <laughs> she has to talk with uh, someone. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. It's gonna call in. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, well, I guess that's um, according to our agenda. That's what we have, and I'm sure we have some bills to pay and some paperwork to take care of. So, unless there's questions from the audience, Gary, Rick, or the Fourth Estate, not being any, we wish you all a great, and wonderful day.